Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox, and I'm coming to you today with a review for Real Housewives of Potomac Season 2, Episode 10, I believe it is. So let's get to it, shall we? All right, you guys, so I'm in a hurry today because I got some work to do. Okay, so before we go to the trip, we get to see all the girls prepared. First, we see Giselle. Her mom is coming to watch the girls while she is in Bermuda. And she breaks the news to her mom that even though the mother loves Kevin to death, that it is not going to work out. She cannot get him out of the friend zone. She does not want to mess up their friendship. So, you know what? Maybe it's just best that they stay the way that they are. The mom is fine with them not being together. Fuck, they was never together anyway. Robin... <laughs> She's glad to get away from those spawns that she has. <laughs> Them smart ass kids that she has. I mean, listen, kids are bad like that. It's not nothing out of the ordinary. I know a lot of people are saying like, you know, I wouldn't be doing this and my kids wouldn't be doing that. I mean, some kids are more mouthy than others. So it's nothing out of the ordinary. That wouldn't mean that Robin necessarily was a bad mother. But it was funny when she told him that the that they daddy went golfing. They was like, you don't play no damn golf. He fucking somebody. <laughs> I was like, when the babies know, that's when you really know that you ain't fooling no damn body. Robin tells us that she's not going to date anybody in the United States, so she figures she can sneak off and get her trick on out in Bermuda. Then we see Karen, okay, her and Uncle Jessup, they preparing to, uh, well, Uncle Jessup is about to take her to the airport. He want to know why she got all these damn clothes. Are you going to be gone for a month? Listen, they not throwing me off with this Bermuda trip. Something is very fishy with this move of this house. Doesn't make any sense that she is going on a trip to Bermuda in the midst of them moving from her beloved home of, what, 28 years or something like that? But at any rate, Karen tells us, I found a home that I love in Great Falls, Virginia. And I must say, it is a bittersweet moment for me moving out of the 20854. Yeah, it makes no sense at all. I don't understand the sketchiness. I mean, you know, we didn't think that he was the black Bill Gates any fucking way. She hasn't told the girls, and that's the weird part, mostly because she already told Sharice that she did sell the house. It was a cash, you know, payment and all that, and that she's moving. So I'm just really not clear on why we all got to be so secretive. But whatever, she gets in the car and she tells Uncle Jessup she's not sure how this trip is going to go with Sharice. You know, we had a little bit of dialogue. She said that she thought that she was hosting. And I said, no, ma'am. I asked you to assist me. That means that you are my assistant. Karen's whole thing is, listen, if she want to think that she more than just the assistant, fine, honey. Like she said last week, let her dry ass stay in her old dry ass lane. <laughs> and speaking of old dry ass Sharice, Shasha is preparing to go on her trip as well. She says that she's leaving the drama in Potomac. You know, she's going to be a team player. She's going out here. I mean, I guess she's looking forward to getting her groove back in Bermuda. It's her favorite place and it's going to be her birthday. I mean, all kinds of wins, right? And she says she's ready to get drunk because she's sick of that fucking Michael. You know, Monique says she, you know, life is good. She's going to get drunk too. Okay, so we all on our way. As soon as they get there, it starts, you guys. And I was just like, are we really about to make this whole episode about who is the fucking host? Who the fuck cares? Now, it might be the fact that I'm not, you know. Because all that matters to me is that I'm going some fucking way. I don't give a fuck who paid. who is. If it was free, <laughs> then I'm good. You know, it's this confusion. Who is the host? They don't know if Karen is. They don't know if Sharice is. Okay, when they get there, it says um, Huger and Party. All right, so they're all just like, oh, you know. I actually thought it was funny that Karen did one-up Sharice. Her ass supposed to be the hostess with the mostess. You didn't know to prepare the rooms and all of that because when they get to the resort, everybody has gift baskets, okay? Compliments of Karen Huger, the grand dame. Yeah, Sharice was hating, okay? Because she didn't think of that shit beforehand. So I was just like, oh, here we go. It's going to be this shit all day. Monique and Giselle are still griping with each other and uh, Karen is just hoping that they can get it together on this trip. Because I don't have time to be coming to a boxing match every time these two come together. So whatever, they get to their rooms. Monique is teasing Sharice like, we need to see what your room looks like. You know, Sharice is like, it better be a basket or it better not be a basket there or something. I don't even know. They get to Sharice's room and it's this huge ass, lavish ass suite. 
And just as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, Sharice about to make me not like her again. Because this is the Sharice that we got last season. The one that has to put on for the cameras. And we already said that shit didn't work last year. Now, why the fuck you in this big ass suite? You ain't got no fucking man. It's your anniversary like you told him on the bus. And it's your birthday. And why would you want to make it worse by being in this huge ass romantic suite all by your fucking self? If something is going to remind you of the fact that you are lonesome, I think this would be it. But she has to show that she's bigger and better than everybody else, namely Karen. Okay, so she's in this huge ass room and everybody's just like, oh, 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 oh. But I was just like, that shit is sad and depressing to me. And yes, she did have a basket as well. Okay, so scratch that neck bitch molded. In the meantime, Karen is down there with one of the employees to the hotel and she was just like, <clears throat> it is important that, you know, the Huga name is all over this. So I want the girls to bond and have girl time and all of that. But I need to blow it out of the water. And the man's like, I got you. I got you. Elegance is the name of the game. For well, somebody who fucked up all of her events last season, I think Karen is off to a pretty good start, don't you? Back in Sharice's room, you know, the old bitch in heat. Man bring the damn bags to the room. And she's like, oh, you're cute. He was like, I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> you hurry up and let her ass know it will be nuns of that, ma'am. Okay? I was just like, ain't nothing even more pathetic than a bitch that's up in this huge ass room by them damn cells, them damn flirting with the fucking bellboy. I said, girl, if you don't stop it, if that wasn't a forecast, a foreshadow of how this trip is gonna go for old girl, I know some. Now, remember, Karen is supposed to be hosting the dinner. Remember, she said that. Okay, so they go downstairs that evening for dinner. Okay, side note, I just got to get it out the way right away. Fuck Giselle got on. Listen, listen, because I know because I'm an older lady and sometimes, you know, we be wanting to do shit and we be wanting to wear what the young girls wear and, you know, we have a nice ass body so we figure we can accentuate it and that's all fine and good yet and still, you know, you can't take the whole fucking young girl outfit and put it on an old ass bitch. You got to take elements, pieces and incorporate it into your more mature look because you end up looking a goddamn fool when you walk out here in these high ass heel gladiator sandals they actually were cute hot pink hot shorts and this tight ass lacy shirt that's i was just like what the fuck who told you to do that now see i didn't told you guys that whoever is styling this bitch and whoever is doing her makeup they are not her friend you walking around with this old crazy ass color hair color you got this tight ass outfit on when you have a bomb ass body you could do so much more okay but you i was just like uh uh but you getting still always talking about how monique is ghetto and urban and all of that shit I said, bitch, if y'all look like somebody that's fucking walking around in the middle of South Central Los Angeles. I was just like, uh-uh, uh-uh. Let me get off of Giselle. But I'm going to have to get back on the bitch later. Again, it's more talk about who's the host. They confused. They don't know. Whatever. Got some slick shit to say about Karen. And then, um, you know, the Gumby dancers come down. And, you know, then Sharice makes her, her uh, entrance as well. Okay, so the gang's all here, right? They do a cute little jig with the dancers and then they sit their ass down to old hot ass, steamy, funky ass dinner. I was just like, y'all know me. I would have sweated a mess out there, y'all. I be sweating, but I only sweat on my face. Anyway, I'm failing to see what the problem is with this dinner when they already said that Sharice was going to do the sunset cruise and then um, Karen is going to do the fucking dinner. All right, so they sit down. Again, everybody is confused because they feel like Karen is ousting Sharice. And they all have a problem with the fact that there were baskets in their room. Now, nobody says thank you for the baskets. They all have a problem that Sharice's name is not. Why the fuck y'all caping so hard for this goddamn Sharice? Sharice says she's trying to figure it out. Bitch, because you didn't do it. That's why. You know, Karen, I find it extremely insulting that nobody is thanking me for the baskets. Instead, you all have a problem. I have never been around somebody who has a problem with a gift that is given to them. And she's sick of it. Okay, they going on and on. And she was just like, bitch, this shit is beneath me. Okay, but what the fuck you going to do is you going to roll up off me and my goddamn gift baskets. And we going to get on with the rest of this day. I think they realized that they was making her mad. So they kind of backed off. So we move on to the next subject. Cherise brings up that Giselle wasn't at Monique's um, party. And Monique was just like, I just... It was my baby's birthday. You know, I just didn't want no confusion, no problems. Giselle going to say she probably wouldn't have come. Anymore. I said, bitch, you is a fucking lie. You know, good deal, Will, you would have been there. Now, was you having a problem with being there or not? Okay, I wasn't invited. Oh, oh that Giselle. 
Oh, she is a whole lot of, a whole lot of, a whole lot. Robin tells him that she's going to fulfill her assignment by dating somebody. And, you know, Carol's just like, whatever, okay? She loves one, so she can take that assignment and push on. She ain't gonna do that shit. We already know that. Then we get to Karen's move. So, what's going on? Okay, and Karen is him and Han. You know, she's expanding her empire. She's really excited. Okay, she has a lot coming up. She never really says that she's moving to Great Falls. From what you guys tell me, Great Falls is where the big money is. So now I'm wondering, like, well, is she really not moving to Great Falls? And she's just telling us this on the TV show? Because everybody was telling me on my comments last week that Great Falls got bigger money than Potomac. Am I right? Am I wrong? Y'all let me know out that way. Then they start up about Sharice's room and how they're going to go back over there after, um, you know, after they finish eating. And, uh, you know, Karen was just like, did you upgrade your own room? Yes, she did. Because she had to show that she was better than you, girl. Sharice was just like, oh, no, that ain't going to never happen i was like okay well whatever <laughs> but i love the fact that she stuck it to her then we go back to uh, sharice's room and again it's all this you know pomp and circumstance everybody being able to go oh the room oh it's so beautiful the bitch drop and break a glass i said that's omen number two bitch it ain't gonna go right for you why they all sitting around talking you know karen tells both giselle and monique that she's gonna take them on this boat ride um with team japan um the u.s open not u.s open child what was it i didn't wrote it down child the the american cup but they don't know that they're going together but she's only taking those two because she's trying to mend the friendship i didn't really see a problem with that the only shady part i guess was the fact that she didn't tell everybody else and then we get another shot of them one up in each other you know sharice says that she has a makeup artist there and Karen tells them that she has her hair stylist there for them. So it's like, and again, I just, we got a good, good shot at Giselle in her outfit. I said, girl, if that ain't for somebody that's 22 years old, you look a fucking mess. Now, the next day, we see Sharice and Robin, you know, they get together in the hotel room before they're going to go out for the day. You know, they commiserate on their many issues. Basically, Sharice is ready to move on and date. Robin is not. They go downstairs and meet with Ashley, and then they realize that, uh, well, Sharice tells them that they're not going out with Karen and Giselle and Monique because they got something else separate. You know, this is supposed to be Sharice's day, and Karen knew that, but she instead split up the group because she wanted to make them... I was just like, oh. so they all get in their feelings about, I'm just thinking to myself, what the fuck? I mean, I know it's a TV show and I really guess this is good that I'm getting some kind of emotion for this old boring ass show. <laughs> I guess they are rising something in me. So, I mean, I guess I'm here for it for that. But I was just like, again, it's so petty and stupid and childish. And I mean, isn't that what these shows all are? So I understand that. Okay, so whatever. They go jet skiing. Honey, they having a good old time. That's Sharice. All of her richness, you know, she sha sha yeah, don't know how to swim. So, she, you know, she put putting along and all of that. In the meantime, we see Giselle and Karen and Monique. You know, Karen says, I just wanted to bring you two together because I feel like you guys did not ever have a first start. So let's start over. So they start talking about basically who deserves to be there. Okay, meaning pretty much on the show. Giselle says she's self-made and Monique is there because of her husband. If we was really going to keep it 100, and I was glad that Monique said it, bitch, you are on this show because of your husband, Jamal Bryant. Nobody give a fuck who Giselle was. We didn't know who you were before you went on this show. So don't sit up here and try to make it seem like, I was just like, oh my God, are you really saying shit like this? This is why I was just like, they really got to be trying to pick at us, you guys, because ain't no way. Ain't no way. Giselle says that she's educated, you know, that Monique is dumb, and that really Monique can't hold a candle to her. I was just like, but you really saying that with the teal and hot pink makeup and this whatever the fuck color orange hair that you got? Oh, okay. Monique really was being nice to her on that because the, the shit that she says is so fucking rude it will make you want to slap her. They get on over there to Team Japan and they gonna get on this boat. And uh, do whatever the shit that they got to do jumping from one boat to the next, okay? And Karen goes first, and then Giselle does her thing, and then Monique is afraid, but she does hers as well. And, you know, they all happy for each other. It was a bonding experience. They all hug and everything. I said, okay, maybe they friends now. Did you guys hear when Giselle said that they team rock stars? I said, bitch, you better shout us out. <laughs> 
That's the best part of the whole fucking show. We get back to seeing Sharice and Robin and Ashley. And, you know, Ashley is telling them about their problems. How, you know, she might have took it to a place where they can't return threatening divorce all the time. And Robin just asks her, are you guys breaking up because of the restaurant or what? I mean, you're going to have to make a decision, okay? You're going to have to make one a priority. Ashley was just like, yeah, you're right. I mean, I guess I'm going to have to. I mean, right now, I don't want to have shit with him. I don't want to have no baby with him. You guys reminded me that she has a pretty hefty prenup, and she's going to be fine whether she have a baby or not. So that might be the reason why this marriage has run its course, especially now that she's on this show. She don't really need Mike like she probably thought she did before she was on this show. But whatever. Now that Giselle and Monique all, you know, they, they good. They on their way back from the boat trip. And, um, you know, they tell her, they tell Karen, Sharice is going through some things right now, you know. She's upset about her birthday and her anniversary. And she's in that big old room with no dick to call her own. <laughs> you have to be nicer to her. I was just like, what if the Karen ain't done nothing? Listen. I really don't understand what the problem is with Karen. Karen is pretentious, yes. Yes, Karen puts on airs. But it's not at the expense of anybody else's. Karen just thinks that she is up here on her own. She doesn't put other people down to make herself look better. And if the bitch want to feel like that about herself, then what is the fucking problem if I ain't saying shit about you? They all got a problem with Karen. Why? Because she's trying to have this thing for them and she's saying it really was not Sharice's thing. She asked Sharice where they should go. But as far as I was concerned, Karen was the one who brought up the fucking trip. All right. Sharice wanted to tag on. They already agreed what the fuck it was going to be. So now what is the goddamn problem? But, you know, Karen says she's going to try to be nice and she's going to try to play nice. And that's the best she could promise for. I said, girl, you better than me. So they're back at the resort and it's the evening and they're getting ready for this dinner cruise. Sharice lets Karen and um, Giselle and Monique know that it's happening in the next 30 minutes. So y'all need to get ready. They done got themselves so riled up and upset at Karen that Robin takes it upon herself that she going to go and talk to Karen about it. Now I'm still, like I said, I don't understand. Did they leave some shit out on the cutting room floor to make it seem like Karen was so terrible just because she did separate the group? I mean, I can see a little bit of an issue there, but it is not this big of a deal. So Robin take her old ass down there to uh, 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 Karen's room and Karen is getting her hair done. Robin confronts her about breaking up the group and Karen says, listen, we were all fighting and, you know, I just felt like this was something that needed to happen and it turned out good. Those two are good right now. I don't see what the problem is. You went jet skiing, right? Did you have fun with the girls? Yes, you did. Okay, so why the fuck you over here talking to me about this shit? And Robin tells her that it just makes her look like she's a hypocrite. And Karen was just like, well, that's fine, Robin. If that's what you think, <coughs> fine. Karen ain't got time for the bullshit. Robin is just still going on. Yeah, it makes you look like a hypocrite and, you know, going on and on and she's leaving out the room at the same time. You know, Karen, okay, sweetheart, have a fabulous day. Because Karen is about up to here with the foolishness. And she knows that even though Robin is here, she's a minion and that this really has Sharice written all over it. Let me tell you something. Sharice is very jealous and she is evil. She thinks that the world should bow down to her because of the way that she put her life together. Okay, listen, bitch, just because you married rich, I married rich. I know they can say the same thing about me, but honey, I don't go around fucking everybody else trying to get to the top. She keep fucking with me. I'll put that damn picture of her and her damn fireman boyfriend out there for the world to see. I said, bitch, you better not come for the grand dame that is Karen. You're not going to fuck with me and expect me to roll over, motherfucker. That damn other side of Karen is coming out. Now, honey, I'm here for it because they all acting stupid. All right, you guys, as usual, that fucking video was longer than I expected to be. Let me get off of here, get back to work. Make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm X Rocks, the channel is Sports Rocks. Everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. I plan on doing the same. Till next time, Rockstars. Bye.